Well, good morning. My name is John and I lead King's Church High Wycombe. And it's just such a privilege to be able to speak to you today, both to the church in High Wycombe and uh, also, of course, a massive welcome to those of you who maybe are just looking in today. Maybe you're not part of any church. And I just want you to know you are so, so welcome among us. And isn't it great to hear those stories of hope from One Can, from Wycombe Homeless Connection, and the difference the church in High Wycombe makes to this town. And I think many people are searching for hope in these times we're living through. And the good news is that through Jesus, we have the greatest hope. We have an eternal hope. And as the church, we carry that message of hope for the world around us. And so I just wanna take a few minutes of your time today to speak a bit more about that hope that we have in Jesus. So we're gonna to listen to a short passage from the Bible and then I'll say a few things about that. So let's listen now to Luke chapter five, verses 12 to 15. Jesus heals a man with leprosy. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him. Don't tell anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer your sacrifices that Moses commanded you for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and be healed of their sicknesses. Well, I wonder what stands out to you from that story. I guess it might appear that the centerpiece of the story is the miraculous healing of an incurable disease, which is just remarkable, it's amazing. Or maybe you were caught out by Jesus saying, don't, don't tell anyone about this. But actually there is a shocking and deeply profound moment in this story that we in our context, we can so easily miss. And that is the fact that Jesus reached out and he touched this man, physically he touched him. Now we know from psychological studies just how important human touch is, because so much is communicated by touch, particularly love, affirmation, acceptance, and I guess in this time of lockdown and social distancing, many of us may have missed that sense of human touch. But you know, what we may have missed is really nothing compared to this man with leprosy, who we presume, given the advanced state of the disease, because it says that he's covered, he's, he's riddled with this disease. We presume that he hasn't experienced human touch for years. And so when Jesus touches him, well, we can only imagine what, what that felt like and what that meant to this man the joy, the, the sense of awe that he must have experienced in that moment with a simple human touch. Because you see, Jesus knew exactly what he needed. Because as bad as the physical disease was, it, it was kind of incidental to the real suffering this man was going through. And he would have been suffering on all sorts of levels. So he would have been suffering socially and emotionally through being outcast. Because he wasn't allowed to come into the town. He, he's taken a huge risk by coming into town to approach Jesus like this. He would have had to live outside the town, his relational network gone, no human touch because he's contagious. He would have been economically destroyed, impoverished. He's got no way of earning a living. And he's also, in the Jewish religion, he is ceremonially unclean, which means he can't enter the temple. He can't be part of a worshiping community. He, he's spiritually outcast utterly isolated, a social, emotional, economic, and spiritual pariah, an outcast. But Jesus knew exactly what he needed. Jesus didn't need to touch someone to heal them. We see that elsewhere in the Bible. You know, Jesus can heal at a distance. He, he can heal over Zoom. His intention is not just to heal this man physically, as wonderful as that is. 
but also emotionally and socially and mentally. And this is our God. This is, this is what he's like. So much was imparted and communicated in that physical touch. Jesus is healing the whole of him and he's drawing this man back into community. And so this man with leprosy, he approached Jesus. He took a great risk in, in approaching Jesus. He encountered Jesus and it transformed his life. He encountered the love of Jesus and the compassion of Jesus and the, the healing of Jesus. Jesus knew exactly what he needed. And it's easy to look at this as a nice story in the Bible that happened 2000 years ago. But the reality is that Jesus knows exactly what you need today. People are still encountering Jesus and his love and his compassion and having their lives transformed today. And so I'm just gonna show you a couple of short stories of two people, Liz and Steve, who have very recently encountered Jesus for themselves. I became a Christian just over a year ago. For many years, I'd been exploring and seeking something in different religions and spiritual paths, but nothing left me satisfied. At the same time, I became a single mum and developed some ongoing health issues. And I got to a point in my life where I felt empty and broken and realised I couldn't do things on my own. My sister invited me here to church and I also began reading the Bible. I soon became convinced that Christianity was the truth. I believed, but I hadn't told anyone. And I felt God tell me that once I stepped out into the light in my faith, things would start changing for the better. So it was on Easter Sunday last year that I took that step of faith. I went for prayer and gave my life to Jesus and nothing's been the same since. The day after I felt as if my heart had jump started back to life. I feel overwhelmed with joy now, which is such a contrast to how things were before. My ongoing health issues increase my dependence on God. I seek him every day and the more I seek him, the more he shows up in my life which makes me want to seek him all the more. It's like this cycle of awesomeness that's going on and God deserves all the glory for it. I used to be an angry, short-tempered man and I would blow up quite easily. And I think deep down my parents, family and friends were actually quite worried about me. I was invited to church by a friend. I had no expectations, but I went with an open mind. But what was obvious straight away is just how happy everybody was. Everyone was smiling, very welcoming, and I just thought to myself, there's got to be more in this. I ended up going on an Alpha course, uh, and this was fantastic. It was a great experience. The discussions were amazing, completely non-judgmental. You could ask anything, anything at all, uh, and I had lots of questions. And really, it was on that journey that I came into faith in Jesus. I realised I was in need of a saviour and that Jesus was it. That he had literally died for my sins and was calling me to have a very different life than what I was used to. This has changed everything in my life. I'm now much more calmer, more controlled, and I have trust that Jesus is guiding me through. I know he's with me, standing by my side. And I got baptised in October last year. He really has changed my life. Not once have I ever felt like I did before. I'm now much calmer. The gap has been filled with love. And just as it says in the Bible, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has arrived. Well, they're great stories, aren't they? And, and it was just an incredible privilege to be able to baptize Liz and Steve last year, along with several others. Jesus is still changing lives today. And he says to the man in the story, be clean. And again, we can so easily miss the earth shattering significance of him saying that. He just shatters all the categories because under the Jewish law, touching a leper, apart from the obvious risk of catching the disease, touching the leper should have made Jesus ceremonially unclean. And that is how religion works. Religion says, if I am good, if I follow the rules, I live a good life, then I get to heaven, I, I make myself clean, I make myself fit for the presence of God. But when what is clean comes into contact with what is unclean, it becomes unclean and it needs to be purified. And so a Jew who was ceremonially unclean would have had to go through a purification ritual to be able to come into the temple again, to, to be fit for the presence of God. But Jesus turns that totally on its head. He says, I make you clean, you don't make me unclean, I make you clean. His cleanness, his 
healing power infected the man and not the other way around. And Jesus says to us today, I can make you clean. No matter what you've done, no matter how tainted your record is, the moment I touch you, you become fit for the presence of God. My cleanness becomes your cleanness. And how can Jesus do that? How is it possible that Jesus can cleanse and, and transform this, this, this physically disfigured pariah who didn't belong in the town? He, he, he really should have been out of town. Well, only because Jesus himself would later on go out of town, physically disfigured himself, carrying a, a wooden beam on his back, and he himself became a pariah. He became an outcast. He, he became a curse as he hung on that cross and he took upon himself all the muck and the dirt of the human race. And he got what we deserve so we can get what he deserves. You see, the human race has a big problem. And it is a pandemic of epic and universal proportions that is infinitely more serious and widespread than COVID-19. Because we're all born into this disease called sin. And by the way, if you have any doubts about the problem of sin in the human race, just look at the world around you. And just look at your own propensity to think dark thoughts and to mess up relationships and to turn your back on God. We're all infected and there is nothing we can do about it. We don't have a cure for the sin of the human heart, but Jesus does. He does. And one touch from him and he makes you clean. One touch from him and the barrier between you and God is removed, the weight of it taken by Jesus on the cross. One touch from him and your life is transformed just as Liz and Steve recently discovered. And so we're just gonna take a brief moment now to reflect and to respond. And if you already know Jesus, take a moment to thank him for his sacrifice, his salvation, ask him to draw near to you again. And if you don't know Jesus, if you've never encountered him, just ask him now to touch your life. If it helps you, put your hands out to receive something from him, but ask to encounter his touch of healing, love, compassion. Just say, Jesus, I wanna know you. An encounter with Jesus will change your life. So just respond to him now. And I'm just gonna leave us a few seconds so that we can do that. <laughs> 